We are live. I'm going to shut, well, I'll shut the door in a minute. Welcome, everybody. You know, whether you are watching this live right now, whether you watch it a year from now, a day from now, a week from now, I want to tell you how much we appreciate you. We continue to grow this YouTube channel, our Facebook page. We continue to grow our podcast. Over 130 countries around the world uh, watch our listen or watch every single week. That's just amazing. And I don't know what I got to do to fix this, but my screen is timing out. That's not fun. <laughs> That's not going to be fun at all because it'll go blank and I won't know whether we're really live or not or see any comments. Um, how do I change that on my phone? That's so weird. I'll be right back. Let me see if I can figure that out. why it's doing it now well i apologize for that shaking thing right now anyway we're going to get started reading uh, savage galahad by bryce walton he's a guy we have not yet featured on the podcast so we're gonna shut the studio door now i want to make it clear that what you're listening is there are little microphones on either side of the phone and so what you're hearing as we go live is that. So it's not going, what you're hearing right now is not going through this microphone into my computer and then back to my recording software here in the booth. So what you're hearing is not as good as the final product will be. So again, the story is Savage Galahad by Bryce Walton, a guy we have not yet featured on the Lost Sci-Fi Podcast. So whether you're watching this with us live right now, or whether you're watching the replay a day, a week, a month, a year from now, or five years from now, thank you for being here. Thank you for everything you do to share and promote and everything you do for us. We appreciate that. So we're going to get started uh, rec uh, recording. Oh, well. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to record. My brain is going a thousand miles an hour. We are so thankful for the success that we've had and, and that we continue to have and it continues to grow. It's pretty exciting. So here we go. He stirred slightly. The ponderously long yet smoothly flowing lines of his body trembling vaguely with the undulating rhythm of the tall, pale water grass. Dim and monstrous shadows floated past, then suddenly spurted in frenzied speed to devour or be devoured, and the dark blue tint of the swamp water browned in wavering veins of blood. An alien organism had come to his world. <coughs> Had come to his world. When we record, we go to the end of the good recording. When I hit the R button for record again, uh, it automatically backs up four seconds so that I can hear the tempo, the tone, everything, um, so that I can match that as we do what is known as a pickup. Uh, let's see where we were. Had come to his world there. We should be. Our script should be right there. Let us record and go. An alien organism had come to his world. 
Its strange radiations pierce his brain in waves of bizarre beauty. Its uniqueness was disturbing the long sleep he was enjoying. Enjoying? Nope. Bizarre beauty. Hey, Aaron. Its welcome. Welcome. Its uniqueness was disturbing the long sleep he was enjoying. Enjoying? Enjoying. Come on, Scott. You can do better than that. It is hot in the booth today. Visions pierce his brain in waves of bizarre beauty. Its uniqueness was disturbing the long sleep he was enjoying in the warm, soft slime. A being from a far world, which he read symbolized in her confused mind as Earth. And facing certain death, she was utterly disoriented with terror. She reacted mentally to his world. The name she applied to it was Venus, planet of the morning. And that was beauty of expression. She was beauty, and so were her thoughts. Her world must have been of that nature, too. His world had no beauty anywhere in it. Beauty would be alien here. Yet he was tired of ugliness. His massive brain circuit contracted. Nope, contacted, not contracted. Hey, Jesse. Yeah, I can do better than that. I should do better than that. Tired of ugliness. Is Matt? All right, tired of ugliness. There we go. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Jesse, Aaron, anybody else who watches later? Thank you. <clears throat> Need to get some water. Be alien here, yet he was tired of Uglina. His massive brain circuit contacted hers in its subtle, supersonic way, knowing everything she had known or could know, thinking as she thought, reacting as she reacted far above him, where she wandered alone along the vaporous fringe of his swamp. And he suddenly realized how alien she really was. For here on this world, she was like a bubble floating beneath the surface of his lake, on the edge of countless dangers, confronted by a thousand deaths. It's a little, little noise there. I didn't like it. Confronted by a thousand deaths. The funny thing is, on the playback, you didn't hear the noise I heard when I said it. Bummer, man. I was on a roll and I stopped myself. May I ask what program you use for thumbnails? Um, uh, Photoshop and Canva, both. Yeah. The surface of his lake, on the edge of countless danger. Confronted by a thousand deaths, but completely unaware of their nearness or exact nature. This was not her world. It would never be a world for her species. And abruptly, he wanted to see her, touch her, touch this beautiful bubble before it burst. For he had never known beauty before, and he was hungry for it. One giant flipper moved softly, and the ponderously sleek form, long and pointed and glistening through the water, lanced upward streaking the depths in a silent blurring arc okay so that's one of those uh you're welcome aaron uh that is one of those um author pauses breaks whatever you call them and i usually insert my three seconds but no, i'm not going to do that today i'm just going to keep going uh tons of sinuous muscle Buried in, he knew how to survive. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's the story, Jesse. 245.8, There we go. You are correct, sir. This is Savage Galahad by Bryce Walton, a, an author that we have not yet featured. So I'm super excited. He 
studied her with curious and new emotions through the thick, heavy hanging mists. His long serpentine form curled out along the global swamp, undulating between the spongy, swaying trunks. I don't like how I said that. Swamp, undulating. His long serpentine form curled out along the global swamp, undulating between the spongy, swaying trunks of two bulbous trees, half buried in the thick, iridescent mud effectively hidden from her alien eyes by interlocking crinoids and gigantic towering ferns. Crinoids? I don't remember. It's a gigantic tower. Hey, good morning, Brad. It could be crinoids, but I said crinoids, I believe. It's a gigantic towering ferns. Crinoid? I think I said, I think it's crinoids. But I could be wrong. Mm. By the way, I just finished Dance of the Dead. Uh, it'll be uploaded in a few hours. And uh, man, that is one deranged story. It's crazy. Crinoid. Crinoid. Crap. Crinoid. Merriam Webster is my. Uh, why is that? Going to black. Ah, I don't like that. Crinoid. Crinoid. Okay. Sorry for the shaky thing there. I don't know why. My phone has never done that before. Iridescent mud. And effectively hidden from her alien eyes by interlocking. Cr Crinoid. Okay. Welcome everybody that has joined us and everybody that will watch the replay. Can't forget you. This at mine. And effectively hidden from her alien eye by interlocking crinoids and gigantic towering ferns. Ah, I like the way I said that. This at mine. And effectively hidden from her alien eye by interlocking crinoids and gigantic towering ferns. Monstrous insects droned broodingly through the spree vapors and ventured to light on his gleaming hide. A quick twitch of long, steely tendons blotted them out in lightning grips, but his thickly lidded eyes remained fixed on the girl who had come from Earth. Ah, uh, sounded a little funky there. Come from Earth. I don't. Oh, a new Isaac Asimov. Sweet. Yes. But his thing. A new Asimov. That's awesome. Which of long, steely tendons blotted them out in lightning grips. But his thickly lidded eyes remained fixed on the girl who had come from Earth. He was not disappointed in her beauty of form. It had a soft, rhythmically. Uh, boy, I'm just. He was not disappointed in her beauty of form. It had a. I'm going to try. We have gone 12 minutes and we are at a little over three and a half finished minutes. I'm going to try and finish this in the hour. Of course, you'll get the better version of it with all the editing and everything later. But. He was not disappointed in her beauty of form. It had a soft, rhythmic, slow. <clears throat> Rhythmic, sometimes the he words was not disappointed in a sentence, beauty of form. It had a soft, rhythmic, smoothly flowing curvature. It seemed to him a perfect, rhythmic, smoothly flowing curvature. It seemed to him. I've been in the booth a lot today, but I, I was just confident I was going to be awesome. <laughs> Whoops. So maybe not awesome with this story. It had a soft, rhythmic, smoothly flowing curvature. It seemed to him a perfect, I can't say perfect, aesthetic creation. It had a soft, rhythmic, smoothly flowing curvature. It seemed to him a perfect, aesthetic creature of creation. 
Oh my goodness. It had a this is the process. Smoothly flowing curvature. It seemed to him a perfect aesthetic creation of its kind. The contrast, too, impressed him. Her frail, delicate form treading so fearfully among gigantic flora and fauna of endless varieties, each vying with the others in size and ferocity. Because of this contrast, she seemed more beautiful here, perhaps, than she might on her own world. But she should not be here. She would find only death here. She did not understand this world, and she never would. He felt the pangs of an emotion utterly strange to him. He plunged the supersonic fingers of his brain deeply into hers and found an expression there that would vaguely define that emotion. Love. It was an abstract symbol that on her own... It was an abstract. We were kind of on a roll. And kind of not. Yes, they Mr. Dugan, tongue twister indeed. Love. It was an abstract symbol that on her own world meant the crystallization of celestial ideals. And that is what I... No, oh, you've got to be kidding me today. So ideal. Okay, let's do this because it's really hot in here. So I'm using that as the excuse for making all kinds of mistakes. I'm going to open the door, answer any questions you have. Um, um, any questions you have, type them in there. Jesse, I'm really excited about this Isaac Asimov that you recently discovered. Thank you, sir. Brad's coming back in a second. Okay, just checking on something. Okay, Brad, check away, man. Ah. Sometimes, uh, I, I've been in the booth for a while today, sometimes fatigue sets in and it just doesn't go the way uh, you want it to go. But anyway, any questions? I can't, if I touch the, the screen, it will move a little bit. But remember when it dropped and dipped and moved every which way? Won't do that anymore because my amazing wife found um, this stand that's like a uh, very pretty rigid metal and uh yeah so it but it, it can bob a little bit but it won't drop uh jm jennings why did you move to costa rica i married this amazing costa rican woman and we decided instead of living in the united states which i had thought which we considered doing which we had thought about doing um, we instead decided to move. I was the one I said, baby, is it okay with you? I came to Costa Rica for her daughter's wedding and it, I just was blown away by how beautiful it was. And so I said, baby, is it okay with you if we move to Costa Rica? Kimberly Ainsworth, hi, sci-fi fans. Hope you're well. Jesse will DM the link shortly. Thank you, Jesse. Appreciate that. All right. Got time for another question or two real quick, and then I'll shut the door and we'll get back and see if we can get this thing moving so we're almost five minutes of finished audio in and it looks like this story i you know i never know for sure but it looks like let me see are we just starting page three yeah so we've only finished two pages of the 13 on the script so six times so it's going to be somewhere in the 30 to 40 minute range so that's cool we got a shot at finishing the whole thing. We may not. Uh, you know, I usually try not to go much longer than an hour when we do this. Uh, any questions? Ask it quickly, if you will, and we're going to get back to recording. And it's kind of funny. I know that the live narration is not for everybody. And some people email me and say, I hate that. Why do you do that? And, and the answer is very simple. Some people love it. Some people like to watch one, maybe two, and then they may never watch again. I don't know. But the thing I do know is it exposes our channel, our Facebook page, our, um, our YouTube channel, and our Twitter. It exposes it to new people. And so some people find us through a live, like what we're doing, and then 
end up, uh, you know, watching a lot of stuff. Are you building in rest time, Maestro? If it's not working so well, Scott, don't force it. You have been on high production. I have, and I'm so excited. You know, I just am. I'm excited. Um, and so I do get enough rest, I think. I always fear it'll spoil the story for me later. It never does, though. Cool. Um, you know, I, I um, just one last comment quick, and then we'll get back to recording. I work out in the pool, and I love working out in the pool, and I can do it almost every day. Uh, some days it is a little chilly. Cold front came through a couple of days ago, and it was too chilly to go to the pool. So I went to the pool today, got a little sun, you know. Um, anyway, I, um, and I, I, I'm more energized after I work out. I love it. So, but thank you for your concern. Okay. <clears throat> and JM, I'm glad to hear that it's not ruining the, D JM, it was you that wanted Dance of the Dead, right? Um, hopefully in a few hours, the, it'll be up. I just got to edit the living daylights out of it. And I want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank you for suggesting that. I never, oh, it's going dark on me again. I never would have chosen that ever in a million, million years. Really was difficult, but I'm glad I went through it. And now we're going to do more by uh, Matheson. Live chat algorithms help, but truth is, I think most all enjoy live if I can make it. Well, cool. Thank you. Um, okay. You're going to love it. JM, you're going to love it. Um, it's just a really, it's a cool thing that we do. I think it's a cool thing that we do. I'm patting myself on the back, so forgive me. Um, every Thursday when we go live, not, not these live narrations, but every Thursday, one of our listeners gets to choose a story they want to hear. I don't know. Maybe other people do that. I don't know. But I love doing it. And JM, exactly. What happened is what I had hoped would happen. I was exposed to a story I would never have chosen, but I'm glad I did. And, and so thank you for that. So if you join us Thursday, next Thursday, we are live in Sydney, Australia at 8 p.m. in Sydney. That is three o'clock in the morning here in Costa Rica, uh, three o'clock in the morning in Dallas and Chicago. And, and uh, so that'd be four in the morning in New York, one in the morning. In Los Angeles, I think. So, anyway. All right, let's get back to it. I am excited. Can you tell? I freaking love doing this. I do. The world meant the crystallization of celestial ideal. And that is what I must feel for this alien creature. He mused. Love. The many other emotions that accompanied the symbol love on her world. Hate, jealousy, hope, ambition, despair, courage. These did not enter his massive neural circuits. She felt this great emotion for another being somewhat like her, very close by. This other being he examined only briefly, for he was ugly. A frantic figure, pacing nervously in something they both knew as a ship that rested not far away in the swamp. She had wandered away from the ship and could not find her way back to it through the mists. And this other organism, man, was being driven into complete disintegration with anxiety and fear for her. But he knew that the man would never find her. There was no jealousy or hate or envy as he curled through the swamp watching her. That would spoil the beauty of this moment. She would be destroyed soon. Other emotions must not distract from the few moments he had in which to absorb this aesthetic thrill of her movements. Gruel. The symbol was etched in his mind as a blob of dark dread. His body tensed into rippling steel. The gruel was dropping down through the mist. His brain could follow every flapping motion of its great leathery shape as it dropped in a straight driving plunge directly for the girl. His triple-lidded eyes could not see it, but that was not necessary. Because of his supersonic brain, he was a ruler of this swamp world, 
And that was why he would survive the dull gray eons that stretched ahead. So long as his supersonic brain guided his actions, he would rule. He tensed, arched high in taut waiting, while the groom plummeted down in a single call. I was on a roll that time. Whew, it is so hot in the booth today. He tensed, arched high in taut waiting, while the groom. I, um, so I always read the story in advance. Waiting, while the groom. And that's why I knew to say grew un because I decide in advance if there is uh, a word that's made up um, or there's a character name or whatever. Uh, great job there. Thank you, Kimberly. So I decide in advance to call that. It's spelled G-R-U-U. That's not how it's spelled. G R U. O O N. So in my head earlier, I, I, in my head, I said, that's going to be Gru Un. So that's why I was ready for it. Waiting. Waiting. Okay. All right. Intense. Arched high and taut waiting, while the groom plummeted down in a sighing blur of speed. Now he could sense the groom's naked yellow scaled claws, outstretched, its tooth beak yawing, and its red disked eyes shining with that insatiable bloodthirst that was the scourge of this world. The scourge of all but himself. He tensed the full length of his mighty corded body, his 12 flippers digging into the glowing mud, his gigantic corded tail curled in feral silence around into a taut ass that could spring outward in a blinding explosion of power. She was experiencing great fear, but still not as much as she should. This surprised him. Now... This surprised him. Now, not Gwoon, Gruun, G R U. So that's, a, you know, that's why I say Gruun. Okay, let's go. No, not as much as she should. This surprised him. Now that he knew how completely helpless and alien she was on this world of his, how frail and delicate she was and how she belonged on a much different sphere than this one. She had no conception that the groom was even now falling down upon her. was even now falling. I am really picky. I know a lot of other narrators go much longer stretches than I do. Um, maybe they have their booth air conditioned somehow, but, uh, and and not everybody has. I have a 42-inch TV in here, and it gives up a lot of heat. But not making excuses. I think every narrator does what every narrator wants to do. And in this case, I'm just really picky, as I have mentioned many times before. And how she belonged on a much different sphere than this one. She had no conception that the groom was even now falling down upon her like a comet, that those poisonous claws would wrap about her creamy body and rip her to shreds and carry her away into the smoking peaks. She was ignorant of all the countless dangers surrounding her. Fifty kim away, hardly more than the length of his own body, was the ship which she was trying to find. But she had not the dimmest concept of where it was. Such appalling lack of basically such appalling lack of basically dimmest concept of where it was. Such a I love this story. You know, I love this story. I don't know where it was. But she had not the dimmest concept of where it was. 
such appalling lack of basically protective intuition was incomprehensible to him. She knew nothing of the breed and its painless bite, which bloated a living organism rapidly until it burst, and the venomous stinging of the crystons that paralyzed to a slow, unmoving death, or the semi-organic true mask tree that waited for her approach even now, immobile without any visible sign to its victims that its crimson appendages uh, oh, okay. immobile without any visible sign to its victims that it go back tree that waited for death or the semi-organic true mask tree that waited for her approach even now immobile without any visible sign to its victims that its crimson appendages... Why did I mess that up again? Death. Or the semi-organic true mask tree that waited for her approach even now, immobile, without any visible sign to its victims that its crimson appendages... I can't believe I screwed that up again. And my screen Death. is going to go black. Or the semi-organic true mask tree that waited for her approach even now, immobile, without any visible sign to its victims that its crimson appendages could suddenly whip into action to trap them, dragging them into its trunk that opened to reveal a slightly pulsating cavern full of half-devoured forms. These were only a few of an endless horde of huge and hideous things. Don't like the, the sound there. Only a few of an endless horde of devoured forms. These just didn't, I didn't like the sound. Hitting cavern full of half devouring forms. These were only a few of an endless horde of huge and hideous things. Yet she suspected none of the things waiting in the mists. She could only believe what she saw through her beautiful eyes. And the mist was thick. Suddenly, the taut S of his body unleashed itself, whipping straight upward in an unbending line. His sharp snout speared up through the swirling vapor until he was balanced momentarily on the tip of his stiffened tail. Then, at the apex of his spring, his three jawed mouth unhinged, gaped and crunched shut on the groove. The vapor was whipped into fretful whirls. The girl sank down, her eyes searching upward, but blindly through the gloom. He sank down once more on his scaled belly, wriggling, deep wriggled, not wriggling. Brilliant. Brilliant. But blindly through the gloom. He's Okay, 50 Kim away. This is called Transformed Language. It lets us know we're in a future world. 50 kilometers becomes 50 km becomes 50 Kim. Did not know that. Thank you, Jesse. Jesse is the man with incredible knowledge. Incredible knowledge. And I'm so thankful for your friendship. Thank you. I'm thankful for all of you who are tuned in right now. All of you who will watch later. Thank you. I did not know that was transformed language. I'm not even sure I knew there was such a thing. Let's see where we stopped. Her eyes searching upward, but blindly through the gloom. He sank through the gloom. There we are. Okay. You know, I know I say thank you a lot, but man, I mean it. I really do. I, I go back to the thought when I started this that uh, I didn't know that anybody would, anybody would care, anybody would listen, anybody would, you know, do any of those things. Um, and so that's one one of the reasons why I'm just so thankful for all of you. Eyes searching upward, but blindly through the gloom. 
He sank down once more on his scaled belly, wriggled deeper in the mud. He dropped the mangled leathery blob that had been a groove. Then he turned his eyes once more on the bit of strange beauty which he had preserved a little while longer for his aesthetic pleasure. <laughs> Perfect stopping point for, for his aesthetic pleasure. The author, and for me to open the door again. Questions, comments, anybody, anything? Uh, let's see. We are five. We're not going to finish. I had really hoped to finish this in the hour that I have scheduled for this. But it doesn't look like we're going to get there. We'll get maybe close. But I'm just super thankful. I say that a lot, I guess. Simply the truth. <coughs> A little while longer for his aesthetic pleasure. Her eyes kept searching above her. Now the dread silence that had followed for an instant after the piercing shriek of the dying groom seemed to affect her more than the sound had. She shook her head, her eyes lowering to look apprehensively about her, then back to the thick grayness above. She turned indecipher indecipherably. Back to the thick grayness above. I don't like the th th on that, so I'll redo that. And her eyes lowering to look apprehensively about her. Lost my place. <laughs> Her eyes lowering to look apprehensively about her. Then back to the thick grayness above. She turned indecisively in several directions, took a few steps in one direction, then hesitated, turned in another, then abruptly and hysterically changed her previous course entirely and was running directly toward him. Yes, she was completely lost. And that was indeed a strange weakness in an orgasm. Oh, whoops. Organism. You didn't hear me say anything. That was indeed a strange weakness. Oh, okay, that, that's just bizarre. <laughs> that's uh, Now if I'm turning more red than I was from the sun, you'll know why. Okay. Lean toward him. Yes, she was completely lost. And that was indeed a strange weakness in an organism. Only 50 kim away was the intricate machinery that had brought her here and which sheltered more of her kind, including her lover, whom she ached to see again. Incredible. And this ship mechanism full of her kind, aliens, were intending to remain here on this world. No, not this world, his world. Yeah, woof. We're intending to remain here on the... <laughs> I'm not even going to... Uh, yeah, I'm not even going to comment on that. <laughs> Incredible. And this... Incredible. Here we go. Lover, whom she ached to see again. Incredible. And this ship mechanism, full of her kind, aliens, were intending to remain here on his world. It was an amazing paradox. They intended to rely for their survival on a number of synthetic defense methods constructed from basic elements and powered by various energy principles. This girl had just unsheathed such a device for her own protection just now, long after the Gruun had attacked and died. If she had any inborn protective instincts at all, they were so weakened from lack of use or by heredity that only now had they gotten around to warning her. And these beings had mechanical detectors based somewhat on his organic equipment. But they were utterly inadequate to meet the predatory ferocity of his world. Why have these irrational creatures ventured from their own comparatively safe world to this. If they actually intended to remain, their chances of survival depended 
on almost immediate adaption. Adaption. Come on. For remain, no chances are. Adaption. Remain, their chances are. So this, if they actually intended to remain, their chances of survival depended on almost immediate adaptation. But that would be impossible, of course. He watched her with a lonely, hungry eagerness. She had slowed her pace to a walk and had already begun edging unwittingly to the right in what would prove to be a long, erratic circle leading away from the ship. But she would not go far, even on the wrong course. She was walking headlong and blindly into the silently waiting arms of the bloated, motionless true mask. He waited, too, watching her. Somehow, she seemed more of a, oh, not more, much more of a, I don't know why my phone keeps, like, timing out my screen. Uh, oh, not more. Okay. Oh, not more. He waited, too, watching her. Somehow, she seemed more. Where are we? There we are. Watching her. Somehow. Ask. He waited too. Watching her. Somehow she seemed more a thing of beauty as she approached death. Death lent a sadness and added to her beauty a kind of poignancy. His eyes half lidded dreamily the full softness of the emotion flowed through him. Nope. Dreamily, as the full softness of the emotion, a kind of poignancy, his eyes, the sadness and added to her beauty, a kind of poignancy. His eyes half lidded dreamily as the full softness of the emotion flowed through him. The pathetic defense mechanism was held out in front of her as she edged along. She was beautiful as she moved. And on this world of his, no warmth or softness of her kind could exist. It would die. On his world, the only living... Uh, on his world, the only living... It is blazing hot in this booth today. i got to take another quick break. Uh... On his world. <sighs> cool air is such a good thing. I do have a fan that I, I try to use, but uh, maybe I should mount it over here. Um, that I sometimes use when I open the door and everything. Uh, not while I'm recording. But um, but uh, since I put the camera there, I, I didn't know if the fan would... Um, be trouble. I'll check it out maybe here next time, and maybe it won't. I see, I think it comes out too far, and you'll see it in the shot, but maybe not over here. So we'll just give that a shot next time. We may go live again uh, Saturday, tomorrow, or Sunday, or Monday in a live narration setting. We may do that. Any questions, comments, suggestions, complaints, anything? I relax and just take a break real quick and cool off, hopefully, a little bit. We are more than halfway, so if I wasn't making so many mistakes, we might have gotten it done in an hour, which, you know, that's, that's really making good time for me. Been a great session to watch. Thanks. Thank you. We're going to get to recording if you want to stick around uh, here in just a second. Actually, let's do it now. Because we're going to stop in about 15 minutes. All right. 
Get yourself a cooling towel to wear around your neck. All it needs is water. You know, I've thought about that, but I think it might be uncomfortable and might limit my ability to move, if that makes sense. Because of her kind could Maybe. exist. That would die. On his world, the only living thing that remotely suggested this girl from another planet to his hungry mind was the delicate, soft petal of the minion blossom. But on close inspection of the unwary or forgetful, even this spit out a deadly white venom. He slid his long, writhing length, slithering soundlessly between the true man and the girl. Between the true man and the girl. Another author break of three seconds. And again, I normally put the placeholder in while I'm here, but for expediency, we will not do that. All right. Her deeply buried instinct functioned better this time, but not nearly quickly enough. Not for this environment. She paused, her head jerking from side to side, the weapon in her hand clutched tightly and swinging with the direction of her head. But her eyes swept unsuspectingly past the true mask. Seemingly, on her world, only organisms promised real danger. A strange world that a soft, slow-turning world... Uh, said it wrong. Didn't say it right. A strange world that... Yeah, my phraseology wasn't correct. In her world, only organisms promised real danger. A strange world that a soft, slow-turning world of dream more than reality. No, I still, still didn't say it right. In her world, only organisms promised real danger. A strange world that a soft, slow-turning world of dream more than reality. Of hope rather than realization of delusion taking the place of a struggle. Slime strung down from the tentacles of the true mask as they writhed toward her in undulating evil shudders. The trunk gaped open. All of the girl's reactions were through his, through, through, through. Oh, I really just, I, this perfection thing of mine, maybe I take it too far, maybe not, I don't know. But I have in my brain that you're not going to be happy unless I'm happy. And I'm not happy unless it's as good as I can make it. Evil shutters. The trunk gaped open. Okay. Evil shutters. The trunk gaped open. All of the girl's reactions went through his brain. And he was amazed by their pointless complexity. A thousand fragments jostled each other in her mind. Memories of the past, forgotten mistakes, hopes for the future with no regard for probability, visions of the lover who waited in the, who waited in the ship. For probability, visions of the... Be happy. That's it, man. That's it. Hopes for the future with no regard for probability. Visions of the lover who waited in the ship. All these and many more equally irrelevant. I said the word wrong. All these and many more. But Visions of the lover who waited in the ship. All these and many more equally irrelevant to this dire situation. She should be concentrating on one thing, escape. Yet she was not moving. She was in a kind of paralysis he could not understand. Now, now she was acting, but as usual, far too late. She was trying to employ the weapon, but one of the bloated red tentacles flipped it from her hand. She sagged down, her mouth mumbling incoherent symbols. She dropped on her knees in the oozing scum, digging down. 
Oh, man. He's in the oozing scum. Digging down. I don't like the way scum came out, so I'm going to get rid of some of the sound there. In the oozing scum. Digging down. Okay. Sometimes I edit a little bit while I'm still recording. I try not to do that while I'm doing this for you guys. She dropped on her knees in the oozing scum. Digging down frantically in a sobbing attempt to find a weapon. But three of his viscous tentacles encircled her. They dragged her toward the maw of the trunk, now gaped to its full cavernous capacity. Her terrified eyes could see an unrecognizable... Uh, I don't like the pacing on that. ...to its full cavernous capacity. Her the now gate to its full cavernous capacity. Okay, didn't mean to put that on there. Just meant to stop the thing, my screen, from disappearing. I have to figure that out next time. It's never done that to me before. I don't know why. But now gate to its full cavernous capacity. Her terrified eyes could see an unrecognizable amorphous shape still struggling weakly down in that pulsating well. He acted as lightning strikes, instinctively. Later, he would know why. In his world, later, he would know why. In his world, instinctively, later, he would know why. In his world, thought had to follow action. His huge jaws closed on a number of the thick tentacles, severed them. They whipped free of the girl, jerking and contorting, slashing the murky vapor in aimless death patterns. The girl somehow had staggered out of reach of the remaining ones. He dropped down again, out of sight, writhing away to bury himself again in mud and fog. He searched her mind. Had she seen him? She must have. Strange that he could find no reaction. There seemed to be a kind of shock. She had seen him. Then some mental defense mechanism had blinded her memory to him. Did she find him ugly? Why? Not he be possessed of some kind of beauty also? He had within him the capacity to appreciate beauty. At least she should be sympathetic and grateful and kind to him if she knew he was saving her from death and pain. Yet her mind would not accept him. She had seen him briefly, then forgotten. Her terror and nervous disintegration was acute now. He could save her from physical dangers, but he could not protect this soft, strange mind and nervous system from breaking apart and losing its balance of function. Yet her beauty still remained. And that was his chief interest. Okay, so we got had a little sound in the booth. From physical dangers. But he could not protect this soft, strange mind and nervous system from breaking apart and losing its balance of function. Yet, yet her beauty still remained. And that was his chief interest. There's a little sound there that... My software did not pick up. It didn't pick up too much. Beauty still remained. And that was his chief interest. Okay. We're going to go just a little more. We are on page 9 of 13. So we didn't quite get her done, but we got her close. Got her close. I will finish this later today. He still remained. And that was his chief interest. The fluid motion, contour, symmetry, and rhythm remained as before, was the justification for her continued existence in his eyes. Her motions did not follow her mental direction at all now. She reached her hands out as though trying to part thick mist like a solid web. She groped about in small circles. Then she stopped. Her eyes parted wide, and she screamed. 
Through the holocaust of sound, the cries, bellows, and screeches and hisses of the swamp, her scream was almost soundless. Yet its mental significance cut into his great brain like a wound. All right. His great brain like a wound. Mental significance cut into his great brain like a wound. The scream's effect had detracted even his wondrous instinctive mechanism for an instant. During that second, the oh, I missed the word torg, I think. Detracted even his wondrous instinctive mechanism for an instant. During that second, I don't think I said torg. It's almost soundless. Yet its mental significance cut into his great brain like a wound. The screams of fact. Yeah, I missed a word there. All right, you know what? We are close to an hour, and I am pooped, exhausted, this heat. This is just, when, when, if I hadn't been recording about 20 or 30 minutes ago, I just would have stopped and got out of here and and uh, maybe even jumped in the shower just to get cool again. So I want to thank all of you for being here. Um, as always, everything you do to promote our podcast, to recommend it to people, we appreciate. Even if all you ever do is listen, we appreciate you for that. For those of you who are watching the replay, I hope this was enjoyable for you, as well as it was for those who uh, watched us live. We may again be live. See, today is Friday, 5 p.m. Central Time. So maybe Saturday, maybe Sunday, hopefully at the latest Monday, we're going live again. And then next Thursday, 8 p.m. in Sydney, Australia, which is three, uh, which should be like London time, like nine in the morning or something, I think. Uh, three in the morning, our time here in Costa Rica, we'll be live again. So I hope you'll join us. Thanks, everybody. Have an awesome day. And, um, and, and we're cranking them out as fast as we possibly can. Thank you.